In the last lecture, we have discussed the potential difference, the membrane potential, the equilibrium potential, the nourish potential. And we discussed how the nourish potential is calculated for a single ion like potassium or sodium or chloride. But we did not discuss how the nourish potential of the membrane will be calculated when the membrane is permeable at the same time to potassium and sodium and chloride and some other ions as well. So to calculate the membrane potential when the membrane is simultaneously permeable to different kind of ions we use an equation known as the Goldman equation. So this is basically the simplest form of the Goldman equation and the, it basically assumes and it basically it's dependent upon a few factors. The most important factors that contribute to in the Goldman equation for the calculation of membrane potential is the polarity of the ions whether the ion is a positive or it's a negative ion then it's it it's also dependent upon the permeability of the membrane for a specific ion for example if it's for potassium it the permeability is very high for sodium it's a bit low and it's for chloride it's almost negligible then it's also dependent upon the concentration of different ions in the intracellular as well as extracellular environment in the intracellular fluid and the extracellular fluid so just um, we 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 also discussed that the concentration of potassium is more inside the cell it's less outside the cell the sodium is more in inside the cell it's it's less inside the cell it's high outside the cell similarly chlor chloride concentration is less inside the cell and it's more outside the cell then we combine all of them in a, in a cell and then we calculate the membrane potential simultaneously and we use the Goldman equation. Well, the Goldman equation also takes a few consideration and it takes into consideration the most important ions. Although there are a lot of ions, molecules, proteins which are present inside the cell and outside the cell but the most important ones that contribute towards the formation of a membrane potential are sodium, potassium and chloride. So it will take into consideration the most important ions. Then it will also be dependent uh, upon the permeability factor. If we look at the Goldman equation it has two important components one is the concentration for which we have written the C and the other is potassium uh, P which is for permeability so the importance of each ion is directly proportional to the permeability of the ion for example if the membrane is more permeable to potassium then the importance of potassium in determining the membrane potential will be high because it's directly proportional if the membrane is less compared to the sodium and uh, less uh, permeable to sodium as compared to potassium then it's then its importance then its contribution in determining the membrane potential will be low as compared to potassium similarly if the, there is no permeability of chloride there is no permeability of the mem uh, the cell membrane for chloride then the contribution of the chloride will be very less Although it's a very very important ion in present inside and outside the cell, but the permeability factor is also important. Then we will consider the ion, uh, the the charge. How the charge are going to distribute? If a positive ion is going out, positive ion loss, or negative ions come inside, then both of the, the both of these factors will cause negativity to develop inside the cell. For example, if one potassium ion is uh, lost and goes outside the cell, then it will cause the intracellular environment to become negative. Similarly, if one chloride comes inside, it will also make the intracellular environment negative because negativity will be uh, negativity will be brought both by the loss of positive ions as well as the entry of a negative ion. Then 
The rapid changes in permeability is basically responsible for single signal transmission. As we know that the importance of the membrane potential is to transfer signals, transfer signals from brain through the neurons to the muscles. Similarly, transfer signals in the muscles from one region to another. That that signal transmission will be more dependent on the rapid changes. It will be more dependent on the rapid changes. So the ions which will have more permeability and will be rapidly changing their concentration, they will contribute more. They will contribute more towards the uh, signal transmission. Now let's consider how the Goldman equation will calculate the membrane potential. In the last lecture, we discussed that if a cell is only and only permeable to potassium, then the potassium will go outside the cell because the concentration of potassium is more inside the cell and it's less outside the cell. But as soon as the potassium starts going out, it also brings with itself some positive charge outside. And the outside of the cell, the extracellular environment, it sort of, it sort of become positive while the, due to the loss of we will discuss the positive ion loss so the positive ion loss will make the intracellular environment a bit negative when their negativity develops although due to the amount or the quantity or the concentration difference the potassium is going out but due to the charge difference due to the positivity and negativity develop the potassium will be compelled to go inside and that we discussed was known as diffusion potential. So we'll basically discuss diffusion potential and here again we are discussing diffusion potential for the single potassium alone. Now the concentration gradient will be pulling, pushing the potassium out, the diffusion potential will be pushing it inside and a time will come when there will be when they both the forces will get equalized and there will be no net movement of potassium outside the cell and that will be uh, if only potassium is allowed that number will be minus 94 millivolt for potassium with negativity inside the cell and positivity outside the cell now consider that this cell membrane is permeable to sodium only. We discussed that the amount of sodium outside the cell is more as compared to the amount of sodium inside the cell. If it is allowed to move due to concentration gradient, the positive ions of the sodium will come inside the cell due to the amount difference, due to the quantity difference, due to the concentration gradient. But as soon as the positive charges start coming inside the cell, there is sort of negativity. The negativity is generated and this negativity when generated and more positive ions come inside, now this positive charge will, will not allow the diffusion potential will generate here and it will not allow more sodium ions to come in. When both the forces meet each other, they cancel the effect of each other. The concentration gradient is pushing the sodium inside while the charge difference or the potential difference is pushing it outside and it is not allowing the movement of sodium that point when reached there will be no movement no net movement of sodium inside the cell and that will be the equilibrium potential or the nourished potential so the nourished potential or the equilibrium potential for for potassium only is 94 and for the Nourished potential or the equilibrium potential for sodium only is plus 64 millivolt. It, as far as chloride is considered, it will not contribute much towards the membrane potential because the permeability is very low. The permeability of potassium is very high. The permeability of sodium is very, uh, is although the permeability is there, but it's less than sodium. And then the uh, permeability of chloride is almost negligible so the nourished potential and the nourished equation previously we discussed that in the nourished equation only the concentration of that ion only the concentration we discussed it in the last lecture that only the concentration of that ion is used 
to calculate the nourished potential or the equilibrium potential for that specific ion. But in the gold main equation, the concentration is not only important, we also have to take into consideration the permeability. The permeability. So when we are calculating the gold uh, main equation, we take into consideration both the concentration and the permeability. And we also take into consideration the charge. So as the sodium is positively charged and the potassium is also positively charged, so we take we take it the we take it as above the above the figure uh, the above figures are basically the inside the concentration of sodium inside the potassium is is above in this figure or uh, but in the case of chloride as chloride is negatively charged so for the log it it is reversed it is flipped because the concentration inside the cell, the concentration inside the cell, it is taken below in the denominator and the concentration outside the cell, it is taken above because the chloride is negatively charged. So the gold main equation will take into consideration the polarity, the charge, it will take the consideration of permeability and it will also take the, into consideration the concentration of the ions. Then the the concentration, the polarity and the permeability of all the major, all the most important ions that are present in the cell, they are combined in a specific equation and then the membrane potential of a cell is calculated. So if we take into consideration this cell, it is having more potassium inside, more sodium outside and more chloride outside but the most important thing is that the membrane potential the, the charge the amount of charge the amount of charge the amount of charge on both the sides will be the same it will the the permeability of the potassium is high so more potassium will be going outside more potassium will be going outside and less will be coming inside because the concentration gradient will be pushing potassium out but the diffusion potential will not allow the potassium to go out so the net diffusion the net movement of potassium will be outside net movement of potassium will be outside the cell with a lot of permeability then is in the case of sodium along the concentration or quantity or the amount difference the movement of sodium is towards inside but the potential difference the charge difference it is pushing the sodium out but the 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 difference or the factor which differentiate both of them is the permeability for potassium is high while the permeability for sodium potassium is high while the permeability of sodium is less so the net movement of sodium will be towards inside the cell while the net movement of potassium will be outside the cell but the charge on both the inside and outside the cell will stay the same the resting membrane potential will stay the same it will be minus 90 it's minus 86 but the sodium potassium pump also contribute so the end result is that with the help of gold main equation in which we put the concentration of sodium concentration of sodium inside the cell outside the cell the permeability of the sodium then we put the potassium concentration inside the cell outside the cell and the permeability of potassium and then with the chloride which is flipped because of its negative charge the chloride concentration is outside the cell chloride concentration inside the cell and then take the permeability factor and we combine all of them and calculate the the potential of the membrane so gold main equation gold main equation is a sort of nourished potential taking all the nourished potential of the sodium potassium chloride combined the nourished potential is used to calculate the potential or the potential uh, membrane potential for one ion only but with the nourished potential of sodium 
potassium sodium chloride they are all combined then the equation is basically goldman equation and it is also known as goldman g it's also known as goldman hodgkin hodgkin cats goldman hodgkin cats equation g h k so this is all about the goldman Uh, go, uh, goldman hodgkin cats equation or the goldman equation and it is used to calculate the resting membrane potential to summarize it the diffusion potential of uh, the uh, individual ions is calculated basically by the nourish potential and it will not uh, take into consideration the permeability factor it will uh, take the perme only the concentration factor but the goldman equation will take into consideration not only concentration of individual ion but also its polarity its permeability and its con uh, concentration it will also take into account the most important ions only it will not take into account account the proteins the glucose and some other important factors similarly <clears throat> the more the permeable is the membrane to a specific ion more will the participation of that ion for example in this resting membrane potential minus 90 the contribution of potassium is very high as compared to the contribution of chloride because the permeability of potassium is suppose 10 and the permeability of chloride is 0 then 0 multiplied by anything will be 0 so the participation of chloride will be almost 0 and it will be 10 so it can multiplied by any concentration will give some value similarly the the charge factor is also important so not only the concentration and the permeability but the charge is also taken into consideration and then the contribution towards the rep, uh, the signal transmission the signal transmission through nerves is also dependent on those ions which is having more rep, uh, more changes in the permeability that are sodium and potassium because their permeability is changing more rapidly as compared to that of chloride so that's all about the goldman equation and it will get more clear in the coming lecture when we will be discussing action potential hope you have understood if there is any way you can post it in the comments thanks a lot for watching the video